Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. I have a very interesting find down in Antarctica I'd like to share with you guys today, and it actually ties in to a region that I've chosen to make my home here in northeastern Florida. Generally speaking, the St. Augustine Palm Coast region is where I live, and St. Augustine probably, arguably, is the most historic city in the entire United States. I'm sure there are others that could make that claim, but if you're a military buff, you would absolutely love this particular aspect of St. Augustine. On the weekends, you can go out to this thing called the Castillo de San Marcos. It was an actual operational military fort for hundreds of years. And they do live firings of cannons. Now, the reason they do that is there's a very specific um, trait of this fort that was new, and it revolutionized how war was done. They didn't have access to classical materials at the time to build this masonry fort. It was built in the early 17th century, about 1627. Prior to that, St. Augustine had fell victim to being burned and being invaded by pirates many times. Once they built this masonry fort and they placed it right here at the mouth of this inlet, that was the end of all that because they were able to affix these large cannons that could reach out and hit ships before they got to the inlet. However, on ships, you are limited to the size of cannons that you can carry and fire safely. So they were helpless. After that's why it's still there to this day, the coquina that they made it with, even if you were able to get a lucky shot with a cannon, it acts like basically the analogy they use when they do the tours is like throwing a jelly bean into frosting on a cake. It just sticks, and it doesn't break. Now, I'm just going to show some images real quick. 
This is an actual cannon firing in St. Augustine. And you can see here's the one of the parapets. This is a daytime firing. And honestly, even when you know it's coming, the uh, percussive effect of these things just hits you right in the sternum. And as many times as you've heard it, it still um, is something to behold. It's one of the neater things about Florida. Now I just wanted to show here this on a ship how much smaller the cannons have to be just because it's a floating platform. Now, what does this have to do with what we found in Antarctica? Well, we have found all sorts of evidence of ships down here lost in the ice. Made the allegation that this was once a seafaring culture. We have seen evidence around the, uh, the edges, so to speak, of ports, of intercoastal waterways, Everything you would need to be a seafaring civilization. In fact, probably the best evidence was this find from late 2018. We found this bow protruding. And it's pretty clear that this is the bow of a ship. I don't know how you would explain this any other way. But the new discovery that we found is actually one of these cannons. And we're going to fly right to it. And as the years catch up, we look closely right here. This very much right here looks like one of those cannons. You can see the reinforced muzzle right here. You can see this classic shape, the, the thicker part at the back. And there even looks like there might be some type of marking or decoration back here, or this might be um, you know, where they lit. Now, full disclosure, what got me thinking about this, apparently I've been told over at Third Phase of Moon, they have found what looks like a submarine. And I did a quick look over there. I didn't watch the whole video. Um, pretty conclusive that it's some type of ship that they found. Um, I don't want to walk on their finds. They've been very respectful and haven't walked on mine. So third phase of moon, apparently in there a couple days ago, has a really great video. And it's uh, really been encouraging to see so many people actually do like I've suggested and download for free Google Earth Pro. You have to have, of course, a laptop or um, some type of a desktop computer. It won't work on your phone. And... You can download it, and in every one of my Antarctica videos, and you can go to the Florida Maquis homepage, go to the playlist section, and you can find Antarctica, and you'll find, I think there's well over 100, not by now, videos. And in each of those videos, in the description, are the coordinates of everything we have ever found, whether it's a dragon, whether it's an entrance, whether it's something like this, a ship. Yesterday we had, you know, the head of an alien, um, we have found uh, sculptures, evidence of cities, all sorts of different things down here using Google Earth Pro. And as the evidence mounts for this, um, one other location that we had found some time ago was what looks like an ancient ship fleet. And excuse me one second while we... Here we go. I mean, for those to be random shapes in the ice seems almost completely implausible, even to the most uh, skeptical of naysayers. And the allegation we're making is this, is that they were um, an ancient civilization that had what we would call advanced technologies, and something happened, there was an event. Um, we've done videos on that. We believe it was the 1703 earthquake in Japan that sent a tsunami down to the tip of South America and it opened up that region more so than it was already between Patagonia and Antarctica and because of that continual flow of water from the Pacific side to the Atlantic side it isolated South America or pardon me isolated what we call Antarctica and changed the climate down there to where the winds began to swirl around and isolate that region and cause the massive buildup 
of ice and snow. It's not just that Antarctica is at the South Pole that makes it cold. It's that it's isolated. It's not connected to any other continents. So anyway, once again, I'll give you all of these coordinates and you can look this, look at this stuff for yourself and make up your own mind. And those aren't the only finds. And one of the best things about Google Earth Pro is that you can look at things in layers. And you can see things that just, this is one of those finds that you don't really look at and say, well, it's, there's nothing there. There's definitely something underneath the snow there. And there's also an article out, you can look it up, it's called the Montreal Protocol. Back in the 80s, they discovered that the uh, one of the main chemicals in hairspray was causing a hole in the ozone, chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs. And so they, they banned the use of these, and over the last 20 to 25 years, 30 years, the uh, ozone is healed down there. But one of the side effects is that it's changed the wind patterns, and it's actually contributing to the melt in Antarctica. There are very, very strange things that you just cannot explain down here. And I know this is a little less convincing, but this to me looks like the bow of a ship that's just, it's been covered in ice and snow and it's starting to melt and it's being revealed. You can see the, the clear edge, the, the rim here around the deck. This is one of them, and I found another one over here. Now, I don't dedicate entire videos to finds like this because they're not totally conclusive by themselves. But when you put them up with the whole of everything else, it does absolutely lend credence to the fact that as we see the ice melt, as we see it retreat, there are going to be things that show up that just cannot be attributed to simple wind, ice, rock, and snow. Like over here, for example. This kind of caught my eye. You've got this flat platform area here. I know it's blurry, but it almost looks like, and we've documented these before, these entrances that have been constructed. Science has even admitted all, everything that you would need to live down here, they have already confessed exists. The warm air pockets down there that are in the mid-70s. The copious amounts of fresh water. They have found DNA from life forms that they can't identify. There is vegetation. Everything you'd need. The seas around Antarctica are some of the most nutrient-dense, nutrient-rich seas on the whole planet. It's also why I've alleged, I believe there are Asian nations down there that are doing secret well at whaling, and we've also shown evidence of that. But I think they've brought stuff up in their nets that is that has probably given them pause, so to speak. All sorts of things can be found down here, and this was another uh, find that by itself I wasn't going to just... Um, make a video about, but since we have a few minutes here, we had found another cube structure like this, where as you can see across the top here, we have a perfect square. Nature doesn't create these. It just doesn't happen in nature. These equidistant 90 degree angle sides and what looks like some kind of statuary next to it. And this region when you zoom out on it, um, this is right up here where we found the ship cannon. And there are all sorts of things all through here. I don't have them all labeled out right now just because it would just litter the screen. And you'd be like, what's this? What's this? What's that? But trust me, the discovery, the act of looking is one of the most fascinating things you can do. And it can be boring at times when you're not finding things. But... If you're really the type that likes to dig down into a mystery, Antarctica is the place to do it. There are so many things down here. And you can look over an area and look over an area and look over an area 
and think you have seen everything, and then you flip the page back a year or two years or five years, and all of a sudden everything changes. And you have to go over it all again. And I've looked over areas and missed things completely. So this is our most recent find. I'm really not sure what this is right next to it, but it doesn't look natural either. And one of the one of the most, uh, I guess, interesting or fun things is when I do a video and I'm talking about one specific thing and somebody says, did you look five feet to the left of the thing that you found and did you not see this? And they're right. Because once you find something, you get this tunnel vision. And I catch myself doing it all the time. And I've had to go back and say, yeah, this person saw this thing and this thing and this thing. So the more eyes we have on it, the more people that pick this up and get interested in it, I think that's going, that's going to be the real disclosure. Waiting for the government to somehow inform us of what the truth is, I think recent events have reveal that that's never going to be the case. So, anyway, cannons, ships, a new classification of things that we found in Antarctica. Like, share, subscribe. Would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Hot time, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before?